ladies. Thank you. It's our government, it's our money, and we need to know how it's being spent. 
And, you know, they, many of you might know that they eliminated the Turnpike Board last summer. Mm -hmm. And in the name of reform, they created this whole new board, the Master Plan <coughs> for Transportation, that uh, not only oversees the tolled road, but all the state highways, the regional airports, regional transit authorities, the, motor, motor, the registry of motor vehicles, and largely the T. So this new five-member board, all appointed by Governor Patrick, who is um, not on it anymore, uh, that has the power to raise tolls, fares, fees, seize property, issue debt, and enter into tens of millions of dollars worth of contracts. And they did this saying that it was going to save us $6.5 billion over the next 20 years. How are we going to save six point? And so I write the governor, write the legislature, you know, show us the money. Where's the projected cash flow statement? When you consolidate, that's one of the basic things that you do. And it was never done. Now, if I was state auditor at the time, I would say, hold on, guys. Hold on. I would take this auditor's office to a whole new level. Also looking at legislation that's passing, I would say, guys, to save $6.5 billion, you need to do A, B, C, D, and E. And then the new board would be accountable for A, B, C, D, and E. But that never happened. There is no accountability left for the, for the new board, no measure of performance. And now they're even backing off what the savings might even be. Now they thought turnpike employees would get paid this much, state highway employees get paid this much, so if we consolidate, this is going to happen. But what do you think is really going to happen? <laughs> you know? So, I mean, it, it, it's, it's important to bring true accountability there and force accountability. Because they do throw numbers around on Beacon Hill, like it's a, like peanut shells at, at Fenway Park, and then left with the, the, with no accountability. And they smile as they pass the legislation, but someone needs to hold them accountable. And the state auditor is the prime person to do that. And, and all this, you know, there, there's fewer and fewer eyes on Beacon Hill watching out how our money's being spent because of the internet, because of Craigslist, because of newspapers' inability to generate the classified ad revenue that they used to. They're pulling back from Beacon Hill. Metro West Daily News isn't there on a regular basis like they used to be. Cape Cod Times, a lot of these newspapers aren't there, making the auditor's job more important now than it has ever been to watch out to protect your interest. You see, the state auditor is the top public advocate for the people in the, in the Commonwealth. It's the check and balance in the system. They're accountable to no one but the public. You know, it's a four-year term, just like the governor's term. It hasn't been, gotten a lot of fanfare over the past several years because Joe DiNucci, good guy, has been there for 24 years, so there hasn't been a whole lot of focus on this race, on these races. But people need to understand how important this is. Because the state auditor doesn't only do audits of the financial statements, the state auditor can do performance audits, efficiency audits. So you know how your money is really being spent, you know whether it's being wasted or not. The state auditor can partner with cities and towns, so when legislation is passing, and that might cause what's call, called um, an unfunded mandate, meaning that the town is going to have to pick up and has a financial burden because the legislation is passing. The auditor can calculate that amount of the, of the mandate for the cities and towns. So the cities and towns have recourse to recoup the funds from the state. And having served on the Framingham Finance Committee for three years, I know the constraints these town budgets are under. The state auditor can look for fraud in programs like Medicaid, housing programs, to make sure that only those truly in need are the ones who are getting the benefits. The state ought to be the top watchdog. As a CPA, I'm trained to be independent, trained to be objective. I was trained as, an, as a CPA, at, as an auditor at Ernst & Young. I was, uh, and still am a CPA. I was the CFO of the state lottery. I taught accounting at Framingham State, taught government accounting at Nichols College. Like I said, I was, at C I was on the fi Framingham Finance Committee. I was on the Commission on Judicial Conduct for six years. I got an MBA from Assumption College. I have the background and the qualifications to do the job, and I'm a proven, I, I, I have a track record of being a prince important. So I know when it comes down to it, I'll do the job for the people. Now more than ever, we need an auditor in the auditor's office. We need a professional, not a politician. And when I was first appointed to the Turnpike Board in 2005, the Boston Herald wrote that Governor Romney Unleashed an attack dog. <laughs> the Associated Press referred to me as a pit bull. And if you like me as a pit bull on the turnpike board, you'll love me as a pit bull. <laughs>